you shouldn't read that negatively. Every now and then in this job, you drive a car and simply come away thinking, it was fine. And if you're building a car in this particular segment, that's practically the response you hope to elicit. A comfortable jack of all trades at a price that isn't going to bankrupt the owner. Consider the Cadenza's competition, Toyota Avalon, Nissan Maxima, Chevrolet Impala, Buick La Crosse. These are groundbreaking luxury vehicles, masters of utility or fuel economy, or Nürburgring smashing sports sedans. There. Fine. You almost feel bad saying it, from a very reasonable angle it's a great segment, populated with cars offering a lot of the same equipment and a little more bang for the buck than a full-on luxury sedan, intending to be roomier too. And yet it's that dilution of dedicated purpose that keeps these models stagnant in showrooms compared to the more luxurious, and certainly to the more economical. It's hard to raise an eyebrow here. So it goes with the Cadenza. Despite looking a heck of a lot like the previous car, the new Cadenza has been reworked significantly, the use of high-strength steel has doubled, to over 50%. The use of hot stamp steel has tripled. The doors are 16% more dent resistant. The chassis has 35% greater torsional rigidity. There's a new subframe, similar to that of the Optima. The front windows are now laminated and there's 13% more sound insulation in the A pillars. There's a full underbody cover and wheel air curtains. It has a new 8-speed transmission, developed in-house. There are 40 fewer pounds of unsprung weight thanks to aluminum parts. The brakes are bigger. And there's a bevy of upscale tech features, but we lost you halfway through that paragraph. The styling is a little sharper than the outgoing models. It's not going to blow your pants off, but it's hardly a bad-looking car. The updated design features Kia's now trademark quad LED setup within the lower front grilles, and the main grille is a concave affair. Base models get a diamond butterfly insert you know from other Kia models, and higher-end cadenzas get Intaglio vertical slats. Keep walking around the car and you'll find the sides have been flattened out a bit and the taillights have received a welcome tightening. The mash of little tweaks and updates mean that the 2017 Cadenza is at once easily confused with the old car and unmistakably the new one. It's hard to explain and sort of the nature of the segment to be a bit anonymous. If you're not, you're the new Nissan Maxima. Points for trying, but we'll take anonymous.